Check. 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 Ready? Good morning. Welcome to worship. I think we're getting some feedback. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's wonderful to see you here this morning, both online and here in our sanctuary. I have a couple of announcements. First of all, you might notice that in your, bag, in your bulletin bag, there's a couple of papers that are uh, that have a ghost on them, and there's a piece of candy and some candy in There are some candy, there is some candy in your bag and some directions about that candy. It's called a boot bag. And it's for you to go out, encourage you to go out and be a friend to somebody else. Somebody, two people, one person that goes to church with us and that isn't here, and then um, another friend or neighbor or family member that you want to encourage this week. It's a fun way to give a little encouragement to somebody. And the other papers we'll talk about a little bit later. And then I wanted to remind you that it's Stewardship Drive. If you haven't turned in your pledge card, this green card, we'd like you to turn that in today or next Sunday. You can put it in the offering plate or drop it off at church. Most mornings, Wendy and I are here. And lastly, I uh, wanted to, Diane said that she has a friend named Pete who needs prayer, so we'll pray for Pete, Diane's friend, and uh, continue prayers for Andy Goslin. Any other prayer requests or prayer announcements or other announcements? All right. I think we'll have a moment of silence. And then we will, uh, as we prepare our hearts for worship. We lift our prayers to you, O Lord. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who through a Pope, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself. The first hymn this morning is, I lift my eyes up.
Give ear to God's teaching. Listen to God's words. We gather to hear stories of old. Give voice to God's glory. Sing of God's deeds. We gather to sing praise to God. Prepare for God's work. Answer Christ's call. We listen and learn, worship and praise in order to serve God's world. The second hymn this morning is Ferris Lord Jesus. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, 
any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in regard others as being as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was, he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the, at the every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, name of Jesus. And the status that he gave them O oh Lord, our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord, our God, and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord, our God, is holy. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this, this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will answer. I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And the chief priests argued among one, with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they, they answered Jesus, We do not know. He said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am going to do these things. What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyards today. The son said, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same. And that son answered him, I, will, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you that the prostitutes, that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I really miss our Wednesday night program, what we call WNP and all the kids. There was always so much fun and energy, never knowing quite what to expect. I especially miss our circle times when we would gather together and each child would have an opportunity to say their name, their age, and to answer a question that I had asked. The questions were simple, like, what, what is your favorite color, or what Halloween costume are you going to wear? Of course, there are always two or three children who could never name just one color. <clears throat> um, purple turquoise is my favorite color, or green-brown. They could never name just one color. And isn't that the way it always is? There are some people that can't seem to answer simple questions or to follow the rules. Lately, we've heard many adults, well, politicians, who can't seem to answer questions. It seems that some can't play by the rules tell, of telling the truth, of not talking badly about others, and of not exaggerating claims. <clears throat> I have patience for the kids who occasionally bend the rules, but I think we all prefer to be with adults who follow the rules. The chief priests and the others were at it again. They were trying to catch Jesus with a quick, tricky question. This time they wanted to know what, why Jesus thought he could do things so differently. Although they didn't ask these specific questions, they wanted to know why Jesus, do you think you can heal on Sunday, the holy day, the day of rest? Why Jesus, do you eat and hang out with those bad people? And why do you keep telling others to do the same things? Who has given you the authority to do these things that we know are wrong? Jesus, as we heard, answered them with a question of his own. And as we heard, the group was afraid to answer that question. It sounds to me like the chief priests and the others were like many of our politicians, trying to take both sides while not letting, the other, not letting others do the same thing. Sometimes kids do this. They want their friends to follow the rules in the games, but they try to bend the rules so that they can win because that's what they wanted to do. Whatever game we play, the kids will call out the others who are cheating, even while trying to bend the rules so that they can win. Games are one way that kids and adults, too, learn that everyone should follow the rules. We follow them to protect ourselves and to protect others. We expect everyone to do the same. If we don't follow the rules, how can we expect others to do that? <clears throat> there aren't two set, sets of rules for any game that I know. Well, I guess maybe the game of life, if you want to call it that, it seems to have different rules for different people at different times. At least some people don't always respect the same rules and the laws like others. The chief priests and the elders <clears throat> of the Old Testament didn't answer Jesus because they didn't want to admit that their words and their actions didn't match. They claimed to be people of God, but they did not recognize God's authority in John the Baptist or in Jesus. They didn't answer, so Jesus told them a parable with a simple question. Jesus' real question is, by what authority do you live? Jesus asks each of us that very question. Many times each day, when we look at our actions and when we listen to our words, we are to wonder if we are following Christ, if we are doing God's will, or if we need to adjust what we are saying and doing. When we talk, do we talk at people or with people? Do we share our blessings because we have much, or do we tightly clasp our hands onto our money and possessions, always afraid we won't have enough? On this second Stewardship Sunday, we remember that God says we are to give generously. We remember that Jesus instructs us to be like the birds, who neither worry or care about tomorrow. We know we are to give. We say we believe God is generous, but sometimes we give very little. Sometimes our actions don't match our words. We certainly, don't, we certainly expect others to be generous, and sometimes we are afraid they're not giving their fair share, so why should we give ours, we think. With God's help, we can make our words and our actions match. 
with God's help, we have integrity and we can have integrity in all parts of our life. Jesus wants the chief priests to see that words and actions matter and are important. Both point to the authority of our life. So think for a moment, how does your life match up? Do your promises, your words, and your actions match? Does your life show that God is the authority in your life? Additionally, we know we should hold our leaders accountable, making sure that their words and actions match, making sure that they fulfill their promises. If local, state, and national politicians aren't consistent, if they don't have integrity, if their words and their actions don't match, it is time to consider how to make those leaders accountable. This Sunday is Reformation Sunday. You probably saw in your pack, your uh, bulletin bag, there's a picture of a church, the inside of the church on one side and the outside of the church on the other side. Uh, Reformation Sunday is a reminder that sometimes rules need to be challenged and changed. In the late 1500s, Martin Luther King was a priest who spent a lot of time reading the Bible. His reading led him to believe that the Catholic the Roman Catholic Church ruled, some of the Roman Catholic Church rules were wrong. He made a point of this by nailing his objections onto the cathedral's door. Luther was not trying to start a new religion. He was not trying to upset anyone. He was just pointing out what he thought, that some of the rules did not agree with the Bible. There were others in Europe and Great Britain who were beginning to have similar ideas. John Calvin went in France, Zwingli in Switzerland, and Knox in Scotland all helped to rewrite religious rules and scripture understandings. Their written work, their preaching, and their proclamations changed how people worship and serve God. They caused a great reform, a reformation, not in who God is, but in how we understand and worship God. They all claimed God's authority in their lives. That never changed. So the two pictures I have in your bulletin are for you to take home and maybe color them or use a magic marker or color pencils on them and put them someplace where you will see them. Some place where you will be reminded that sometimes changes are needed. Sometimes, like right now, changes are needed. I say that because we have recently learned that there are over 500 children still separated from their parents. Parents who came to this country to the southern border seeking a better life for their families. I understand that you might say these families broke the law and should not be here. Whether we agree or, or not about immigrants, hopefully we can agree that it should not have happened to, that the parents were separated from the children and that it will not happen again. No country, including the United States, should separate parents and children especially for more than three years. Imagine for a moment when your child was four or five years old and having that child taken away from you for more than three years. Imagine the missed birthdays, the missed Christmases. Imagine the missed hugs and kisses, the missed times of tucking the child in bed at night and the teaching moments of every single day. This is what our country has done to these families. We have torn them apart. At this time, three years after the families were separated, the reasons no, for the separations no longer matter. What matters is getting these families back together. What matters is changing the law so this never happens again. When we claim God has authority in and on our lives, then let us live that way and work to make the changes necessary. That is what Jesus is, was trying to tell the chief priests. And that is what we know. Changes are needed sometimes. Changes directed by God, through the Bible, through prayer, conversation, and discernment. Just as Luther and the other reformers said more than 400 years ago. We are here worshiping together. Our words and our actions say, that this morning, say that God has authority in our lives. So let us respond to God's gift of life, family, health, and home by generously giving. As we are able to give our time, energy, talents, and finances. 
Let us give thanks for God's love as seen in Christ Jesus, for the forgiveness of our sins and for eternal life done by Jesus Christ alone. Remember what I said last week, this year as you complete your pledge card, increase your donation by a minimum of $1, $52 a, a, for a whole year. If you would do that, you would help our church just by giving a little more, your gift will make a big difference every week in the work our church does. And let us respond to God's authority by making the changes we need to protect children in this world, no matter whose children they are and no matter where they came from. When someone tries to separate parents and children, let us be the first to ask, by what authority are you doing this? Certainly not by God's authority, because we know God. We know God does not harm children and families, not now, not ever. Politicians, we are holding you accountable. We want you to do what you promised to do. Stand by what you said you would do. We know if you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. When Dwayne and I were seniors in high school, you know, we thought we were very grown up, but actually 17, we were still kids. Dwayne gave me a promise ring for my birthday. At that time, we understood we were too young to be married or even engaged, but we wanted to make a serious commitment to each other. Thus, the promise ring. Then everything was fine until in May, I went on a school trip and I met a cute guy from Goose Lake Schools. We met on that trip. The trip was all about science, kids who love science, and we really hit it off and we had a lot a lot of fun those two days and laughing and talking. So I was hopeful he would write as he promised, and he did write me a letter. On the envelope was his return address, including his name. When my mother handed me the letter, she said, I didn't open it, but I can see it is from a guy other than Duane. Melody, you, you are at decision time. How are you going to live your life? Are you going to be a person of commitment, one who stands by her words? Or are you going to be a cheater? Someone who says one thing and does another. What you do with this letter and how you treat Duane says a lot about who you are and what kind of a person you will become. Wow, that's all I could think as I took the letter and ran to my bedroom. I was a teenager and I really didn't appreciate any advice from my mother. But I could tell by her tone, she was serious and she was concerned. And suddenly I knew I was at a crossroads in my life. I realized that I wanted to follow life's rules of love, commitment, honesty, and respect. I don't remember if I threw that letter away or I wrote back that I was in a relationship and he shouldn't write again. But what I do remember is that I made the right decision. Thankfully, my mother spoke words I could hear, and I did hear them, and I made my actions and my words match. Now I hope I speak words that you can hear, that regardless of your political stance, vote with God's message in your head and heart, and go. Leave here living lives of integrity with your words and your actions matching because God is the authority of our lives, now and forevermore. Amen. Shame. Sure. 
Reynolds has um, on one side a writing about Zwingli, who was uh, in Switzerland, and he did a lot during the Reformation. And while he was alive, there was a play. And he wrote this song, and I'm going to read the words to the first and the third stanza, just because we have been burdened. And we have this play going on in our own lives, this pandemic. And we forget sometimes that we're so tired, and I thought these words might be encouraging. Help, uh, help, Lord God, help. In this trouble, I think death is at the door. Stand before me, Christ, for thou hast overcome him. To thee I cry, if it is thy will, take out the dart, which wounds me, nor lets me have an hour of rest or repose. Wouldst thou, however, that death take me in the midst of my days, so let it be, do what thou wilt. Me lacks nothing. Thy vessel I am, to make or break altogether. For if thou takest away my spirit from this earth, though thou dost it, that it may not grow worse, nor spot the pious lives and ways of others. And then the third verse, he's convalescing, and he's starting to feel better, which gives us all hope. Sound, Lord God, sound, I think I am, already coming back. Yes, if it pleases thee that no spark of sin, rule me longer on earth, then my lips must thy praise and teaching bespeak more, more than ever before. However it may be, in simplicity and with no danger, sometimes endure, perhaps with greater anguish than thou would have now happen, Lord. Since I came so near, so will I still, despite and boasting of this world, bear joyfully for the sake of the reward by thy help, without which nothing can be perfect. Some of those words are not how we speak, but I hope you can find some comfort and joy in knowing there are other people going through what we are going through, and, and they are surviving. And now it is time for the offering. You are generous and putting your offering in when you came through the door, and Lark will bring that up. And we'll sing the doxology. Humility and integrity 
that all may enjoy the true justice and protection of life from its conception to its natural end. You have provided us with a fundamental gift of freedom. We pray that you protect and offer grace to all those who serve us every day to protect us and maintain our freedom. Our military, law enforcement, firefighters, EMT personnel and healthcare professionals. Holy and gracious God, your power is revealed chiefly in showing mercy to those in need. Give to the sick healing, to the troubled peace, to the grieving comfort and to the dying peace. Here is first on behalf of June, Pat and Jim, Kay, Phyllis, Jesse, Sandy, Tommy, Donna, Sue and Steve, Jan, Sally, Paul, Price, Kim, Betty, Betty Penry's daughter, Amy, Wesson Joyce's daughter, Anna, Wesson's sisters, Molly and Marion, and his brother-in-law, Rick, Marilyn's son, Brad, her daughter, Candy, Janet Kirk's daughter, Amber, Chris and Colleen's aunt, Joan Tabor, Debbie Smith's brother, Tom, Sally's son-in-law, Don, Stacy Gettys' husband, Dave, Carrie Long, Ron Levy, Randy Gosselin, the family of Marilyn, of Marion Forsyth on her death, Dwayne's uncle and aunt, Faye, and Don, and his friend, Mission Starfish, Haiti, and Pete, and those we name in our hearts before you, Heavenly Father, you have given great gifts to your people and provided resources to meet their own needs and for the poor. Bless the agencies and programs of your church by which your people give aid and support to those in need. Help us to provide gainful employment to all people that they may enjoy the fruits of their labors and honor and honor you with the works of their hands. Almighty God and Father, we pray you to grant us all good things that will benefit, benefit us in body and soul and to prevent anything harmful to us or to our salvation. Teach us to live in contentment with your will and purpose and in the freedom you alone supply to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now, and forever. And now let us pray your prayer as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Kirk and Stacy. Let us uh, stand and we'll pass peace. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us uh, face toward the center and wave or shake your banner. All right, please be seated. We have uh, the congregational meeting now.